my interview section here, I've got a special guest, A.C. Blunt from the Love of Christ Food and Clothing Pantry. And let me tell you a little bit about this. I would go by that location many times during the course of a week for many months, and I would see a lot of activity going on there. I'm always thinking like, wow, what's going on over there? And I'll tell you why it piqued my interest. I used to live in Colorado, and I was going to a church, and this church mentioned they were having a function where lots of people were getting together to go to the farms that uh, farmers had left produce to be gleaned off the field. And so there was a caravan, a long caravan of pickup trucks. And the, basically they said, bring some work clothes, bring some work gloves, and bring a good knife to cut off broccoli and cauliflower. We're going to be sticking them in bags and all that. I cannot tell you how much of a blast I had doing that, going out there in the field, feeling like I was making a difference, helping people out. Everybody had a great time. They even gave you a bag of cauliflower broccoli to take home with you just for your efforts, which is awesome. So that's what kind of intrigued me when I drive by the Love of Christ uh, Food and Clothing Pantry. I see all this activity going on. It was making me think about that. So I stopped by, and I got to meet A.C. Blunt. So with me right now is A.C. Blunt. So, A.C., I would like you to say hi. And if you wouldn't mind, please, sir, after saying hi, give us a little bio about yourself. You know, tell us about who you are, what you do, and, and all that, and then we'll get into some questions. Well, thank you, Matt, for having us. I appreciate the opportunity to uh, share with people in the area of what goes on at the Love of Christ Food Pantry. Uh, I've been working there at the Love of Food Christ Pantry for about six years. Uh, the last three years I've been in charge of the food pantry, and so I've had the honor. As Matt talked about, you know, it's, it's part of what, why I work there is for the opportunity to make a difference in people's lives. Sometimes we succeed, sometimes we don't, but we at least made an effort to make a change in people's life. Because it says if you look at the uh, billboards that are in town, stuff, it says one out of five people are hungry. They, and so we have a chance to feed somebody and make a difference in people's lives. I want to make a comment about what you just said. Ladies and gentlemen, you know me. You know what I say. There's three types of people. There's the informed, the ignorant, and the idiots. I don't deal with the idiots, the ignorant. There's hope. You can teach them. But it's the informed people. A and B. A, formed and active participants in society, and B, informed, and they just sit there on the couch and they play their games. They may know stuff, but they don't do anything. AC here is doing something. I respect that. Go on, AC. Well, thank you. Uh, we work quite hard at that place to make it a, a place where that when we have people come, that we would be honored to have them. Sort of like have it, offering somebody to come into your house. That's the same way we treat that place over there, that we would have somebody that we wouldn't mind them coming in. Mm -hmm. And so we spent a lot of time on that. This last part of the, when Matt came by, we were working on and helping the workers because most of us over there are retired people. The younger folks can't do it because their walk of life right now is to earn a living for their family. And people that most of them, almost 99% of them over there are uh, retired folks. And so this is our walk in life for a chance. Yeah. So not only are you giving out food and clothing, you're fixing refrigerators. Isn't that what you're doing? Well, we were fixing refrigerator. We, we unfortunately had a refrigerator that was put in there in 1992. It was in storage is what I'm told. And yeah. uh, it went out. It used a Freon that was no longer used uh, that we could get. And so we had retrofitted it last couple years ago and tried to put new Freon in it. After four tries, it finally got the right Freon in it. Now you this see that time. people, active participants out there who are hearing this and who have expertise in these types of things can go to Love of Christ and offer your services. Just a great example of what you can do to help the system. Go ahead. And so what we ended up doing, we asked the guy who was helping us. We've got a guy at the, one of the churches. That's what he does for a living. So on his off time, when he's not working, he comes over there and helps us out. And so we got to the point where it said it would cost over $4,000 to replace Ouch. just the, air, air I mean the compressor and the condenser. We, with the unit being that old, we wor worked in with some people and, try and got a, another unit that's being a, uh, made workable here in the next few days. Well, that's great. I'm glad you were able to at least coordinate. But just uh, everybody out there, if you know something, you got nothing to do, if you've got time on your hand and skills, you might want to contact AC here. We'll give contact information out a little bit later. Okay, now, AC, what I normally do, you mm -hmm. interject anytime you want, okay? But what I normally do, standard procedure with me, is my guests, we get questions to make sure that you know what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. I don't. There's no tricks here, and we'll want to get you to have time to come up with the uh, full answer, and that's what we're going to do here today. So I've got a list of questions. Some of them may be a little bit repetitive or intertwined with another question, mm -hmm. but we'll work it out. Cool. So let me ask you this. When I 
I think you mentioned already part of this, but you might want to go into more detail. When I pass by and see you distributing food and clothing, it always seems so well organized. Who and how do you get organized? How do you organize that much food and clothing to go out to so many people? What's the trick? Well, part of it is we're blessed with a building that was a, at one time, if you've lived long enough in the temple area, that was a uh, central freight warehouse at one time. It looked like that, And yeah. then it became a carpet warehouse, and somehow in the past it became a fixture somewhere in 1992 to the uh, Western Hills Church of Christ. Uh, so that place has been running for a, a number of years. Can you give a specific uh, identifying marker or an address as to where that is? It is 2000 Airport Drive. It's, it's right where we're the, located. It's, it's, it's right at the split of Adams and 53. When you come down 53, it's going to be right on the right-hand side as you come off the ramp, right? And you've got to want to go there right now the way the road construction <laughs> know, right? is. <laughs> so we, we've kind of asked ourselves, how are these people going to get here with all that road construction that's I got around there. right now? If they're hungry enough, they'll find their way over there. And right. We've lost some families, but we have we have still given out a lot of food. Okay, well, we'll get into more about how you get it so organized. Unfortunately, you got the building, but I mean, you must have. A, um, is there a system that you got in place, or how does it work? Well, for me to work is I can't do the whole thing. There's no way. If you try to do the whole thing over there, it all would end up in failure. Sure, you got to delegate. And sure. so what you do is what I've done, or what we've done over there, is to delegate. To different areas to different folks like we have the warehouse that's dedicated to a lady named Mary she takes care of the warehouse in there of organizing things have a gentleman named Bob who gets in there and organize the food so that when we make sacks on Wednesday they're ready to go all you have to do is pick up the can and and put it over there I have another one two ladies that do the clothing room for us have a lady that does the bread room for us and then there's another lady over there that does the computers because the government asks us to be accountable for what food we give out. Ah. And so if we, you know, they want to know it's going to Joe, Mary, or whoever it may be. Why is that? Because they, I'm with them. I understand there are some places where they just give out food and they don't care where it goes. Well, we do care about where it goes. And uh, well, wait, Mexico is that, gonna, is that gonna intertwine with another question I asked you? You know what that question is, like what's the requirements? Yeah. If it is, let's wait. And I'll, we'll talk I'll wait about on that. that one, yes. But let me go back to something you just said, sacks of food. What's in the sack of food? Well, we have decided there has been two ways of giving out food. There's what they call client choice. It's one way of doing it. They go in there, pick it out, and what they want. They want this and want that. Uh, we've gone the other direction right now because we feel that we can give more people more food over a longer period of time, you know, hit more areas. And so we have two lines up there in the uh, food bank where that uh, one t contains uh, uh, pastry types, uh, not pastries, pasta stuff. Uh, fruits and vegetables, and then there, there's another line that contains vegetables and stuff in the line. So we try to make sure that everybody gets a sample of all of it, mm -hmm. one from the A section and one from the what we call the B section. And, that's and, and it all depends on what we get in. You know, if we, you know, some times of the year we can't get any peanut butter. You know, so nobody gets any peanut butter. So we so find are, a are you giving, too far. Are you giving like? How much food, how many days supply of food do you provide? Well, it depends on the size of the family that they do it. Some of those, those that we've given out recently, I said they're in for a good week because we've been blessed with a lot of food. They've got it, that, that buggy that we've been supplying them with the past several weeks uh, is full. It's full of stuff. You know, and, and, and the trend right now of why we're getting another refrigerator out there is the trend is most of it is fixing to go to fresh food. There was, and it's a hypothetical thing, the gentleman that we work with uh, said that, you know, there was 10 canners at one time, and that's not right, but the, the dimensions is there are about four now. So most of the f food is going to start coming out is fresh. And so if we can put it in the refrigerators, then we can store it over a period of time. You know, sometimes like the other day, somebody wanted to give us 14 pallets of spinach. Well, I didn't have the other one up, and the other one was full, mm -hmm. so I had to turn it down. Because they got the key word when they in when you know truckers give you know food out, F R E E free. Is we got you got it. We take it. We can give it to fix. So wow. you know, and and again you know how do you get a situation like that where you have fourteen pounds of free spinach? Well, it, well, part of it comes is that we we are starting to network. You know how a tree grows with its roots and That's stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. We're starting to find out people that we have uh, demonstrated to them that we do give food out to people. You know, it just doesn't go to, you know, like the government, it doesn't go to my house. It that's doesn't go right. to the people's house that are there. Oh, so that's, though, the, that's the reasoning for that. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. That, you know, that 
you know, doing it. Like this year, I said, you, you've got to do an audit of my place? I said, why? He says, well, you've got over 400,000 pounds of food from the Capital Area Food Bank last year. And uh, I said, where's the breakdown? 270,000. <laughs> of course, I got more food than that from the area, but when they, so they've got to do an audit of us. So, I mean, you know, just to make sure, and I have no problem with it. Come on, see what I've got. But, you know, as I tell the clients when I get to meet them and greet them from time to time. I'm just trying to figure out how would you audit beets and carrots and spinach. Well, they, they look for, <laughs> they look for uh, uh, you know, the weight and see where it's going. And I don't want anything ever to make right, the trash all can. This, all this is doing is showing we're legit, we're doing a good job, mm -hmm. you just want to check it out, no problems, no worries. Okay, right. let's advance to question number two, which you were about to touch on. Who is eligible to receive this food and clothing? How do you determine this? Uh, the government says that we have to have a, uh, an ID of a person, a picture ID that says this is who you are, and I have to have proof of uh, a residence where you live, you know, like a utility bill, insurance bill, or your, the way you pay See, your now, mortgage. Now, i got stuff. a problem with that. Here you got a person who's starving on the street, would love to have some food, but he doesn't have an address or she doesn't have an address. How do you get around that? Or don't I go you? in. I go in the back and make them a sack and stuff and give it to them. Okay. Well, we have what we call the homeless package for people that don't have a residence, so we don't turn people okay. down. All right. But I've got a package that I give to them just so they can have some food for a while and get them by. That's very nice. Is there anything else on that eligibility section as to what they need? Driver's license, ID, uh, residence, anything else? No, that's it. We we do. We have the option of how we want to give out the food and, you know, how often we give it. And our objective is is to try to give everybody some food. You know, we could centrally locate on a, a certain group of people uh, who to give it to, but we've decided to, that you can come once a month, and most of the food banks in the area are that way, and you decide when you want to come, and we'll give you the food. And what we have at that time is what we can give you. Can't guarantee you what's going to be there. Yeah, that's right. You know, like last week, somebody, after it was over with, a uh, trucker came by and said, do you want some eggs? I said, sure. <laughs> so the people last week got some eggs, which weren't on the list to order. Well, that's good. Eggs are great. You can do lots yeah, of eggs. They are. They are great. Now, where, I know you told me truckers are coming by, but in general, explain where and how you get the food and the clothing to give away. I know that the food banks... Um, central location they spread it out. Why don't you be a little bit more detailed on that? Well, uh, in Austin, there is a what they call the Capital Area Food Bank. And they distribute to approximately uh, 300 partners, or th partners over 1,900 square miles. They give. They go all the way to Waco and all the way down to San Marcos and then go east and west. So there's, uh, like I said, there's 321 uh, counties that they serve in. And there's about five in this, you know, in what we call Bell County mm -hmm. that give out food to different folks. And so that's where we get it. We have been recently uh, blessed that, you know, we've worked with HEB and that we're getting some food from them. I used to uh, work there. You know how much food is wasted over there because the certain rules and regulations and how? But, but that, that's part of what we're trying to work through. It's like the food bank comes down. They're coming down later this week. Uh, not this week, but this month, and they're going to check and see how we're getting the food from HEB. Are you checking the temperature when it comes out? Are you covering it with a blanket? When you get there, are you weighing it? And then when you put it in the freezer, you know, is it the temp what is the temperature there? So they have created, in this case, which is good uh, accountability to how we get our food. And so if, like, to HEB and to other folks... Well, sure, you've got to be careful because you don't want food no, to go bad. No, we don't want people to go bad sick. or any of that right. stuff. But we're being accountable, you know. In other yeah. words, it's it's going here. We're taking care of it. It stays in the freezer until it's time to ready to, to give out. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you may ask, well, what, how is this pertinent to Matt's Aaron's High Cap Adventure Radio program? It has a lot to do with it because when I see this and I see how important, vitally important it is to be prepared. If something, God forbid, happens, do you want to be unfortunate where you have to go walk up into a line and ask, do you have any eggs today? Or why not get yourself prepared? So this puts it in your face that people are out there, and I know you know this already. You're listening to me. You probably got it down pat anyway. But it just puts it in your face. It puts it in my face that there's a lot of people out there in need. I drive around a lot, and I see a lot of people in need. And it makes me say, I won't want my family to be in that position. I'm going to do what it takes to get prepared. So this is kind of a wake-up call here. Okay. AC, <clears throat> how about this? We are, you talked about how often you distribute it, right? Uh-huh. 
Besides just giving away everything, is there any services that you provide to help people to get back on your feet? And what I mean by that is the old expression says, I um, teach somebody to fish as compared to just giving them fish to eat. Is there any services that you provide other than just giving out food and clothing? Last year we did a cooking class. We uh, partnered with the uh, Capital Area Food Bank. They came up here and they were trying to teach people how to cook more nutritionally. You know, how to take a food that would not be good to eat if you fried it a whole lot, but how's another way to prepare that food where one, mm. it's still nutritious, and how you don't, you know, you help people. And do to a lot stay of people? Sh- do a lot of people show up to that? We we showed up. Uh, several of them did. We had about 15 to 20 uh, individuals that showed up for a week, uh, and hopefully that helped people. You know, it's it's like anything you do. We do over there, we plant, you know, we, we spread it out, and mm-hmm. then hopefully they can do it. And so if Capital Area wants to come back later and they want to do a, 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 a you know, a cooking class, we'll do it again. Uh, we also, uh, we, we partner with some other food banks like CTLC. We do what they call a SNAP program for kids, you know, how to get them uh, into the program where they can get free food or get stuff along their line. Uh, the last couple months, we've had Scott and White up there trying to s- sign up some of the folks for health care, mm-hmm. trying to get them on he- health care and doing it. Uh, and then, like I say, we do homeless packages for those kind of things. Hey, see, let me ask you this. We've got a lot of people out there listening who have great capabilities to do many things. Mm-hmm. What do you wish you could do, but you can't due to lack of funds, due to lack of product, due to lack of personnel, due to lack of skill, blah, 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 that you can express right now maybe somebody out there getting the itch wants to do something can maybe give you a call and say hey I can do this well part of it of giving things out and stuff is having enough volunteers you know if you don't have enough volunteers like on right now on the Wednesday night it's a program that we just started about a year ago started with about seven uh, families we were averaging 40 to 50 families on Wednesday night ah. that we used to not have. You talked about what have we done to help improve the program. Mm-hmm. That is one thing. And, and the reason for it on Wednesday night is we want to hit people that work during the day. There are people, hardworking people that are out there working, but they need a little help. That's, That's what right. Wednesday nights are for. There are people who can't get rides to the, you know, during the day. And people are off work. They can bring people to the food bank. And so it's a chance to... Uh, hit uh, another section of folks that could use some food. So what you're saying is top of the list is more personnel to help. That yeah, would help. And then we can always use uh, money. We, you know, with people donated, we we're, we have done some, we can buy food. You know, like we, you talk about buying a can of corn. Well, you buy a can of corn, let's just say hypothetical, about a dollar at a grocery store. When you buy four cans there, that's four dollars. At the food bank, I can buy 24 cans for that $4. Wow. I mean, it's money that it's things that are donated to the food bank. They just charge us to bring it up here. So, you know, you can donate stuff, and, and it's very appreciative because we have the, at the church do the same thing. Because so, people, so people can come to you directly and do donations. Yes. People can come to you directly and give you financial support. Uh-huh. They can come to you directly and give their physical support. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, right now, so we don't waste up the time because the clock's ticking. Tell everybody how they can get in contact with you or your organization and how um, website, whatever you've got, so that people out there listening can uh, contact you. Well, one of the ways we have, we're located on Facebook, and it is at facebook.com slash loveofchristfoodpantry. Now, everybody, this is going to be on video, too, this interview, and he's showing a shirt right now. So, AC, let, make sure it's seen in the camera there. You can cover my face, Paul. It's okay. <laughs> okay. So say it again. Um, AC, what's that? It's a, we have a Facebook page mm-hmm. that I communicate with people. So one of them, I just show what people are doing there. And this is a way I try to let them know. Why don't you say it verbally, though, in case people don't see the video. Tell them how they can get there. Love of Christ? It's fa- Facebook.com slash Love of Christ Pantry. One more time. It's Facebook.com slash love of christ pantry okay that's a, that's a way to contact ac talk to them if you've got anything that you can do to support them or help them and remember um this is a great way to see it for yourself to make you say i don't want to be in that position and since you are blessed 
and able to be out of that position, let's turn it around and maybe help some other people out. Okay, we got a couple minutes here, AC. Let me ask you a couple other things. Sure. Uh, what church are you affiliated with? I'm with the Western Hills Church of Christ. Okay, that's the one right around the corner. Though, that's right? around the corner, okay. yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> I've already asked that. Do you work with other pensions? You talked about that. Uh, <clears throat> man, we, I think we've gone over a lot of stuff here. Can anybody just walk up? You said anybody can just walk up, right? Yeah. And, and get, get food? food? Right. And as long as they have the items we afford mentioned with them, we can give them food. Now, <clears throat> the f food bank at one time, we had what we call USDA products. They had a, uh, if they made a certain amount of money, they couldn't have them. And so now the USDA has come back and says it doesn't matter what they make. Of course, we fudged a little bit. We don't, we didn't care what. <laughs> You're on radio made. there. Yeah, <laughs> I know we did. We fudged. But you know, I talked to the guy down at the Capital Area Food Bank, and he said there was 99.9% .9 come under the radar. You know, they meet the requirements. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's a 0.01% <laughs> okay. of people. So I'm, you know, that's too much. <clears throat> that's too close to call. Okay. In the last 60 seconds. Yes, sir. Tell me again. When the Love of Christ Pantry is open, days and times, and then if there's any other last things you want to say to close it up. Sure. Uh, we are open on Wednesday from 6 to about 7.15. We give out food there on Wednesday night, and we are almost every Wednesday night except for a couple exceptions during the holidays. We are open on Friday, uh, Thursday from 9 to 12, and we give out food. If you want to come help, 7 o'clock on Wednesday morning, an 18-wheeler rolls up to our uh, loading dock and every food pantry in the area gets their food along with us and so you want to unload some stuff woohoo or you want to make sacks for us yeah. and again depends on how many sacks that you know we gave out the week before of how much we got to make but to, to end with it if you want to mind it, it is a great labor of love yes to, sh to to get to do this and uh you know it, you get called for times to do it and sometimes we answer and sometimes we don't. I was and called up in Colorado. I was driven to go do that and I'm so glad I did. And it, it's just a, it's a neat feeling that you do it and you, you create such partnerships with the people who you deal with. They come very, you know, they come on a regular uh, thing. You get to know their family mm -hmm. and they get to know you because you have a regular conversation with them and so there is a, a relationship bonding Good report, yeah. and, and the people who work there half of them get food there. <laughs> But they, I asked a lady one day, which it kind of broke my heart a little bit. I said, why are you giving this clothing? And I just, same strange thing, decided to ask her. She says, you helped me when I was in need, so I want to give back to you. There you go. What goes around, what you give, comes back heart. tenfold, you know? Amen. All right, AC, it's been a pleasure.